Well, you know, most startups ignore market issues in their early life. A typical startup is a lot of engineers, a lot of technical expertise. But it's interesting, startups never fail for technical reasons. They might be delayed for technical reasons, but they seldom fail for technical reasons. They do fail for market reasons, meaning wrong product, wrong market, wrong customer, wrong channel, any number of things that can go awry in the process of developing the product. Developing the product. So my recommendation is get your market right, validate your market, bring on market resources early, don't start building anything you know precisely what you're going to build, then bring on your technical team. When it comes to product, the investors are looking for really something very special, um, something that um, maybe is not out there today or something that is um, better than what's out there today in a, in a marketplace that is a, a niche market that they could really end up owning. First release products should con contain the minimally acceptable feature set of the tar for the target audience. The reason why is for every day you're out building your product and not actively selling or marketing it, the market is changing underneath you. So you've got to get to market very, very quickly with a minimally acceptable feature set. The best example I like to use here is Microsoft. Nobody I know uses release one or release two of any Microsoft product. They do use release three. Why? Microsoft ships minimally functional products for its first release, improves them a little on the second release, and by the time they get to the third release, they've usually got a good product. And remember, Microsoft has more money than anybody else on the face of the planet. They can afford to put literally thousands of engineers against the problem and, and brute force create a market, but they never do. They take small teams of 10 and they slowly and methodically tackle minimally acceptable products delivered to the market and then refine based on market input. What happens in entrepreneurial companies is the last hire they make is the marketing guy. Quite frankly, it's one of the first hires they need to make because it's important that they continue to hone their message, their positioning, uh, how to take their product into the market, determining their channels of distribution, what are those messages and what are those channels that they can leverage to have uh, uh, to, um, to quickly executing and uh, get traction in the marketplace. Market validation is a technique I've seen work to great success inside many investments I've made. And when I say market validation, what I mean is going out and really getting to know the market personally. And when I say personally, I mean the entire management team. And this involves everything from customer interviews to analyst interviews to any number of techniques from focus groups to market research to secondary research. And actually a great deal of a good hard kick in the ass focuses on this and always talks about getting back to the market and how the market is the thing that ultimately differentiates what a, whether a company is going to be successful or not. And it's a company's job to understand what the market wants. Because if you really do understand that, your chances of success go up dramatically. But too often people get more obsessed on the product or the delivery of the product or the operations issues or the simple checklist items. You know, did I save 10% off the copier and did I get a good deal on real estate? In the end, I'm not saying those aren't important, but they have nothing to do with the success of the company. What does determine the success of the company is how well the market is known, how well it's understood, and how intellectually honest the team is about incorporating that market input into their product. There are multiple sources to, uh, to find uh, venture capitalists. Obviously, the number one resource would be the internet. You know, there are different publications online. There is Venture Wire. Uh, there is a National Association of Venture Capitalists. Uh, there are, you know, multiple organizations. And then there are the venture capitals uh, it, themselves. We develop our business by having um, a CEO of one of the companies that we have funded and supported hear that um, uh, someone is looking to start a company and refers that person to access venture partners. That is important. But we do take a look at what we call over the transom deals, cold deals. And at the end of the day, it turns out it's always usually somebody you know. I think the most important thing to focus on is, in fact, uh, the domain or the segment or the industry that you're targeting. 
and really do a lot of homework about the market. And when you start doing the homework about the market, the size of the audience, who you're going after, what companies you're going after, you very quickly will find you know, either press releases or information associated with that industry segment in particular that you're going after. And then you'll see the whole kind of ecosystem. There are investors around that. There are companies that buy products. For, and then there are companies that make products for that particular industry. The types of entrepreneurs that have success raising capital typically know their investors in one way or another, be those investors, angel investors, institutional venture capitalists, or simply customers from whom which they get a consulting contract to get into the business. And the reason is people like to do business with people they know, and the customer or the investor will probably find somebody who knows a space and has learned a space in a previous life and they're much more comfortable either, either having that person do a consulting contract or making an investment in that person's company based on the fact that they have experience in the category. initial screening process, an entrepreneur may call or we receive an email saying, are you interested in a, a given company? We take a look at the executive summary. We always request an executive summary. And we um, read the executive summary and call the folks back and say we are interested and schedule a meeting or we're not interested in, and um, either recommend they go to suggest another fund or just suggest that maybe they come back to us when they're in a, a better position from their uh, business plan standpoint. It's fairly unusual for a plan to come in off the streets or over the transom and get funded. Usually there's some connection into that fund, either, uh, either the entrepreneur has worked for a portfolio company inside the venture fund, or again, there's a service provider or other connection into the venture fund. And it's important for entrepreneurs to find a way to get inside instead of simply submitting a business plan. Because there are so many that come in week in and week out, it's really impossible to separate the good from the bad without having some kind of personal connection into it. We see business plans per year at numbers in the hundreds. Uh, we have an associate who is typically a graduate student and his main job is to be the first set of eyes on all the plans. Uh, and then what he'll do is he'll be looking initially for things that fit our particular screening criteria, which in our case is geography, uh, the stage of funding, early stage in particular, and the industry, the sector focus. Uh, once it clears all that and if it's something that he thinks would be of interest to the partners, then I get involved and make an intermediate decision about that. I try to anticipate the kind of questions the partners would ask in the investment committee meeting and help gather the due diligence to answer those questions. Um, and then help the associate make a presentation about the particular company or business plan to the investment committee meeting. What, there's sort of some key points that uh, usually results in rejection of a business plan or an idea uh, is that we don't feel the entrepreneur really understands the, um, really understands the product and the market. Uh, we can sit down with a company and spend a half an hour in, in this room and not know any more about what their product is or was than uh, we did before the meeting started. The selection of your investors is, is paramount. Uh, it, it actually makes or break the idea. The startup CEO should also um, investigate the venture capitalist before uh, you make the call on the, on the VC. You should look at the type of uh, companies or products they are funding, um, what they like, what they don't like. Um, you don't want to get into a competitive situation uh, with them. Uh, you might even ask um, other people what they know about the VC, the VC partner that you're going to meet, so that when you make that initial sales call or you make that pre presentation, you really know what they're looking for so you can close the deal. Questions entrepreneurs seeking funding should ask their investors are what value are they going to add on top of the money they're bringing to the table. It's fairly common to hear the, the comment that everybody's money is green and that's true. And although as an entrepreneur frequently you're dying for somebody to give you money such that you'd take anyone's, don't. 
You've got to find somebody whose money comes with good advice, good experience, good contact network, and good mentoring abilities because you are going to get very, very close with these people and you want to make sure you're taking it from somebody who can add value to your company. Another question you'd want to ask is how much, what can they do or how, much, how willing are they to help you in terms of seeking additional financing and or helping you penetrate accounts, uh, potential uh, accounts to market to within your industry segment? And some venture capitalists are focused on particular segments of markets or industries or geographies. And so you want to really do the diligence on, on finding you know, not only an investor that is interested in what you're doing, but also an investor that perhaps has not invested in something that is one of your competitors. Uh, definitely you cannot group all venture capitalists into one bucket and, and make generalizations about them. For example, I think most venture capitalists are thought of as vulture capitalists from the perspective of the entrepreneur. That may be true for those general partners who have got into it um, without any operating background, without any true entrepreneurial startup background. Perhaps they come more from a financing background, are interested in great returns for their limited partners. but. That's definitely not true of all venture capitalists. Our firm in particular prides itself on the fact that you know, one of our general partners has been CEO and chairman of a public company. Uh, another one of our special limited partners has, has been the senior executive at several well-known startups. We're really more interested in working with great people who have really cool ideas, who want to attack very large markets, uh, who we think we could really help build a, a great company out of. Um, that's why we at this firm are doing what we do every day. We're really focused on, on the companies. We add value, I think, at all levels. We get personally and directly involved to the extent you want us involved. We spend time with the board, on the board, with you before the board meetings. We uh, work with the other VCs that are involved with the company. We, again, go through the whole help with the recruiting process. Uh, then with the, the team building process, with the market building process. Um, we, uh, again, because of our relationships in really to two states and then the Bay Area, we know a lot of folks who may tie into your company uh, from a product and a marketing standpoint. And that's the value we add. A lot of entrepreneurs make a lot of mistakes thinking they must have one VC firm or another based on geography, prestige, size of their portfolio, portfolio companies, reputation, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, get your money. There's no other rule that works. So if you have the opportunity to finance with the very, very best tier one VC firms, great. Make sure you get your money in that process so that by the time you end up finishing your tour of the VCs and the tier ones in particular, you haven't run out of time and therefore you're bankrupt of any future possibility of continuing the fundraising activity.